Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. No. Um. <laughs> afternoon i have the pleasure of speaking with the director and the two starlets of the breaking glass picture girls on film robin bain the director willow gray and dare taylor thank you for joining me today thank you, thank you for having us yeah. <laughs> thank you so Listen, much the by the way the ending of the film totally did not expect that ending i was thinking it was going to be you know one of the standard hollywood endings that we would have expected where you know i'm not going to give it away but like you know oh of course it's going <laughs> to end good. like that you know, but no, there was, there was a twist, you know, I like the different ending that went along with it. So I have to commend you on that first and foremost. Thank you. You know, I don't know what to say without giving anything away. So right. I just say thank you. It's an unexpected ending. That's what we can say. Right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Darren, Darren, and I have met before on another film. So it's great. Great to see you again. Um, your character is a, can well, thank you. Uh, your character. <laughs> Your character uh, is a nursing student who ends up uh, becoming a cam girl to pay for her rent and for her education and mm -hmm. ends up getting evicted from, yeah. from her play, from her residency because her manager finds out. And Willow's character is the super rich girl that just wants a friend that essentially endangers everyone that comes near her. Is that the basic gist that we can give to everyone without giving too many spoilers? Yeah, I, I would say so. Um, I always like to describe it as a dark drama um, with some fun little laughs in the midst of it, because there are some good, happy moments in this film that you can kind of giggle and relate to. But yeah, I would say that's a pretty good synopsis of what our characters, like who we are and what we're going through. Um, yeah. Willow, do you have any thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I mean, both characters in their own way just represent different insecurities and different struggles that people generally go through like you said I just need a friend it's like no one wants to be alone and like when you look at it like the overarching story through that perspective of what each are individually going through like as Jair said there are like really sweet moments because you realize that like it's just two women going through and trying to figure it out you know Robin how did the story come about and you know what was it like working with Breaking Glass as the production company uh well this is actually the second film I've done with Breaking Glass. So um, they're amazing and I love working with them and um, they're so supportive and um, really kind of let me artistically do what I want to do. And on this one, I just wanted to kind of um, delve into the toxic relationship between two women because um, just regardless of explore, uh, the you know um, consequences of power and control and that toxic behavior. You know, there's seeing it's the toxicity happens not only in romantic settings but also in friendship settings, and this is one sure. where sexuality is used not only as a power play in you know uh, you know a, a friend struggle, but it eventually becomes a romantic one. And the power of sexuality and how it can uh, dominate a relationship was that something that was like in the in the in the foreground when you were working on the story. For sure, because I think that, like what you just said, uh, sexuality can sometimes take over a relationship, especially in the beginning of a relationship, and you become blind to certain problems or issues that you otherwise might notice. But even in a friendship, if you're just a regular friendship, those things can happen because you're swept away in the fun and the happiness and the good times and ignoring any red flags or anything that might come your way. Uh, you know, Dare, we mentioned this in the uh, early part of the pre-interview that at one point you were doing, you know, some of that cam work yourself, and then eventually you've moved on and, and become a content creator. You're now also a film producer. When you read the script, like how similar was that to either certain experiences or to things that you're like, oh, this is great to touch upon because people might not know this world from this angle? Yeah, when I first was given the audition page, I instantly connected with the story just because of the timidness of this character um you really get to see rain or 
Jenna, go through a journey. Like she is very timid and very inclusive at first, like very shy. All of a sudden she's kind of thrusted into this whirlwind of meeting this new girl and, and falling for her and then trying to figure out what she wants to do. And, and I have been there before where you meet someone and they're putting their best foot forward and it's a little deceptive in the long run where it's not truly who they are. So I knew once I got this script that I, I could just feel it. Like I wasn't nervous at all for the audition. I wasn't nervous at all to meet the director. It just felt right. And I could really connect with the character just because I do have that background of working in the adult industry, despite I didn't take it as far as my character does. But I, I do know a lot of young women who have gone as far as my character has. So it it just truly came naturally and it, it felt right and it fell in my life at the perfect time. And Willow, you, like myself, is an only child, um, you know, so you can understand when your friends go home or when you went home from your friend's house being by yourself how much of that like childhood loneliness plays into your character in this like i i'm pretty introverted in my personal life so i'm like cool if i'm by myself i'm by myself but like did that play any role in you know bringing up some old memories for this character yeah absolutely i mean it wasn't just me being an only child my only family is my mom and we moved over 20 times throughout my childhood so it's kind of like a new definition of just like I didn't have anyone and the only thing that the only continuity I had place to place was just the fact that like I love stories I love movies I love reading because it was my only escape so using that escape allowed me to basically survive for so many years and so this character she's complex there's also good parts to her it's not, not everything can't be taken at face value I think it's like a huge thing to just like understand about her and to like come in audition because I don't there is that like deep understanding it's like again that like motif of just like being lonely and wanting to have someone and you learn what she goes through throughout the movie or what she's been through and it provides more context into why she is the way she is um which I think is beautiful and as someone that like while I may not have necessarily turned out exactly the same in a lot of ways I understand where she's coming from because I've had similar experiences myself. So using that, it it did like what Dare said with hers is like it felt right. You know, Robin, the name of the film, Girl on Film, is uh, right or Girls on Film is right on the nose. But we also mentioned it's a Duran Duran song that right. you and I are both <laughs> quite familiar with. Um, right. <laughs> you know, did the title come about while listening to the song, or did like any of that <laughs> that come into it? Like, how did how did you just want to be like right on the nose with this one? Well, in all honesty, the, the uh, originally I had titled the movie Rain after Dare's character. And um, when Breaking Glass kind of took over, we were passing back and forth lists of potential names. And Girls on Film was one of those names that everyone agreed upon. So that wasn't really my brainchild. Okay. Although I do like that song. It's a, <laughs> listen, it's a great song. We had it Dare look song. it up because, you know... <laughs> I know you girls should listen to it later. I was like, thank you for not putting me in. Because right. <laughs> Will, Willow didn't pick up her phone in the middle of the free interview, like, going, "Who are these people?" I'll, I'll look it up after. You know, Willow, now Willow's going to get a whole new wave page on Spotify, just just yeah, blaring exactly. some classic stuff. She's going to be like, "Adam, uh, Adam, Ant, who's that?" Like, it's going to be all these people. That she's the heard of. Right, right. <laughs> you know. This weird, this weird English guy dressed as a pirate, which is going to end up in Robin's <laughs> next film. So, Probably. <laughs> yeah. But Robin, you've done these type of films before where, you know, uh, like, you know, girl lost and, and different and different aspects of, um, you know, female characters having to go through these hardships, you know, is where do these stories come mm -hmm. from? Like people that you've known that you want to share these stories or just not enough of these sh stories have been shared? I think a little bit of both. I mean, um, I uh, lived in LA. I moved to LA when I was 18 years old and lived there for many, many, many years, more than I want to actually say. But you just encounter so many, especially if I start as an actress, so many women struggling and dipping into different parts of the industry, dark side, good side, 
so many ups and downs. And I think it was just always interesting for me. Um, and I like to watch movies like this. So it was sort of a natural progression to kind of want to make a movie like that. Yeah. And, you know, because L.A. does have its darker, seedier side. So it's uh, it's uh-huh. interesting that it's being revealed since that doesn't happen too often. You know, we're we're blinded by the tinsel and uh, and not by the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Yeah, there's there's a very large Boulevard of Broken Dreams. In dreams. I mean, most people don't make it and it's really hard and you have to deal with so many things. Um, I want to say just as a woman, but I think that probably men go through it too, especially if they want to be an actor. I mean, there's just so many ups and downs. I, I can't even tell you like the road to even get to be sitting here talking to you has been paved with a lot of heartache. And I think it just comes through in my writing. It, and this is for all of you. Is it a little easier when you work on your own project in your own independent film that you don't have a bigger studio putting their hand into everything that you're doing so you're allowed to tell the stories that you want? I mean, fairly really kind of the reason for me to do it is that I, I am a little bit of a control freak. And on top of that, I don't want someone whispering in my ear, well, they should do that when they're, you know, a... 45 year old man who's never been a 25 year old woman and has no idea what they're talking about. You know, I don't want that noise. And so for me, it's, it's better to just keep it small and tight. And we had such a small crew and just like, it was very intimate. And I wanted it to be that way because these two girls had to go through so much. It was such difficult material. Um, And I didn't want any like pressure or bad feelings or, or, you know, being nervous or any of those things to to come about because that could have happened if we had 20 people staring at them while they're delivering some pretty serious lines i don't know how do you two feel about that i've I said this before, <laughs> even more so than like having an overarching like power figure like booming it's like it makes such a difference having robin as the director having a female director, like more specifically it just like across all of her movies, specifically this one, is dealing with a lot of sense of material that, as she was saying, like, comes from being a female, especially in L.A. And it's hard. And it's something I think a lot of people could resonate with and not something always really touched on. So, yeah, having that, like, we knew each other very well. It was, like, a very intimate set where just, like, it felt safe and it allowed us to not feel like we're trying to, like, please anyone else over there and just allowed like Darren and I to do the do the characters to the best of our abilities and Robin to do what she does best. Yeah, I second everything they both said. I I've been on big sets before where of course things happen. Like you can't predict what's going to happen on any film set nowadays. But I have something really special with this project specifically that it primarily was a lot of women um, on board and and driving this ship, essentially. And I feel like it only brought us closer together. And it really made us better actors, actresses, directors, in the sense of, like, it. we weren't sending one person to communicate. Like, it wasn't eight people trying to talk to us and try to tell us what to do. It was simply just Robin communicating straight to us. So it, it does add a sense of, like, camaraderie, team building, and... I, I personally really appreciated that. There was no point where Robin came to me and was like, you wouldn't do that if you were a cam girl. She was very much so, you've been in this world. I'm curious, what are your thoughts? And then she would take my thoughts and translate it. Um, also, same thing with her and Willow. She asked a lot of times for our opinions on even like the smallest things, but it created such a good experience and a healthy balance on the set so it it really is like a labor of love from not only just robin but all of us since we all got to work together so intimately you know and there a lot of people get stuck in that shoebox uh of an industry yet you've been able to expand out and move away from that what is that like for you to be able to move away from that and now to be recognized more as a performer and a content creator it's a journey (laughs) it is definitely a journey I primarily started off as an actress. I actually got discovered when I was 10 to move to LA and pursue acting. But at the time, my mom and I like financially didn't have the money to move from Minnesota to LA, but I should have known it was a sign that I would end up here in the long run. But 
the way that I wound up in the industry was just simply being in the right place at the right time. Um, there was a Playboy scout looking for a girl to be on the cover of a foreign edition. So I got kind of lucky in that sense that I was ready. I I had work for, and that's what threw me into the world of like adult industry. But I mainly, I mainly loved doing it because I love the artisticness of it. It wasn't essentially like, I want to go adult, go full blown. And I was still acting on the side, like still doing like commercials and TV. And I just one day was like, you know, I want to move out to LA and see what it's like out here and see if there can be a world where somebody who is online in the adult entertainment industry can be successful as an actor. And the thing about success is, is it's up to you what success is. So to me, pivoting into this industry, there never really was a strong pivot. It's always been in who I am as an actor, singer, songwriter. It was just really a breakthrough for me having someone give me the chance. Um, there was no point where Robin felt like, I don't know. I don't know that I want to hire somebody who's in the adult industry. What if she's late? Or what if, you know, there was no hesitation um, with her, well, from what she said, with <laughs> bringing me on board. And I'm so thankful to that because of her vision and the way that she tells this story with her writing. I think it's going to make people look at me very differently and respect me very differently. And I only hope that other artists can see this journey that I've been through and can do the same thing because at the end of the day, we're all people. You know, Will, according to your IMDb page, this is your first full length feature. When you get cast in something going from, you know, a TV role and a short film to now this full blown full length feature film, you know, how excited are you as a performer and then to get such a heavy role as Blake and all the stuff that she's going through in dealing with loneliness and an absentee father and, you know, having these finances, but no emotional ties to anyone like, you know, how do you build off of that, like out the gate? Um, I mean, I'd say in the sense, again, like I've always been acting in some capacity. I love stories. I got into it because I would read a book and read a character and get such a bad book hangover that I just become the character for the next few months. So, I mean, a lot of it, like, as we said, is just like, you, you find like, what's common between the character and like how that overlaps with your own life. And like, in this circumstance too, it's like a lot can be drawn upon. And I was so excited to be part of this because also I get to do what I love for like an extended period of time. It's amazing. And with like the best people and the most comfortable environment, it was such a great opportunity. And I, I don't think that like in the sense that like she is a dark character and that's hard. It was like, it was tough material overall because we're having like sensitive information and just like it's it's there are difficult circumstances but I don't think that necessarily made it any harder I think just like the challenge of it made it even more exciting that I had the opportunity to start off with such a complex dark individual <laughs> <laughs> and now the film comes out from Breaking Glass on uh, November 7th uh, via VOD is it going to be on all the standard platforms as well yes I believe so I mean I, I actually um I know Amazon Prime um, I saw online today it would be uh, Spectrum as well, and but and Tubi at some point, but I'm not exactly sure, and I should have gotten that information before this interview. But. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. The good thing about Tubi is Tubi takes care of the people that, that they work with, from, from yes. what I hear, especially with independent films. I love Tubi. Yeah. Yeah. They've been putting out a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. like, like People forget how much content like Tubi and other streaming platforms like them that do have commercials actually mm -hmm. do do very well with, with their audiences they have so many cool shows and old shows from the 80s that you and i would know but they wouldn't like things like that you know just <laughs> i don't want to age you but since you need it's, your Andrew, it's all right you know I, <laughs> I i freely admit i'm getting old and i don't mind it <laughs> yeah P no people in southern there. california don't like admitting that they're getting old but we are right right you know yeah. And there, another five seconds pass and we aged. So make everybody yeah. happy. <laughs> <laughs> Made it. Right. Yeah. And then don't worry, when Willow and Dare are, are closer to our age and someone comes along and goes, Taylor Swift, who's that? You know. They're like, Google yeah. it. Or right. it'll be something else by then. Right. 
you know, it'll be their implanted chip in their wrist. Like, like, yeah, right. Fatal <laughs> inward right now. Yeah. Like, so exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'll be one of those things. So, yeah. But the film does have it does have its softer moments. Um, you know, the character of Blake Willow's character does have moments of, you know, I don't want to say pity. But you you start to feel for her at some point. She's just not this sociopath that wants to abuse everybody in her in her way. You know, there is reasons for why her character is this way. You know, same with Rain. Rain is evolving. And I think you have the most character growth with Rain because not too many stories will develop that way. Of, oh, it's a cam girl. Oh, the you know, she got taken advantage of. Oh, well, like, you know, there there's so many more layerings in this. Uh, what have other critics' reactions been to seeing the film? Well, we've we've actually only had one critical review so far because um, the movie hasn't been out yet, but it's been very good, and so I'm hopeful and excited, and I I appreciate that you're noticing um, those layers because, um, especially with the Blake character, with Willow's character, I think it was for people to feel any kind of empathy for her in a way because she's wealthy and she's beautiful and all these things like who cares if she's upset but there there are she has real reasons and I think also that Willow brought that with her um emotions and her feelings and the same with Dare's character I think that again like you see a beautiful cam girl she's just one she's a paper doll she's just that but no there's so many so many dreams and aspirations and loves and heartbreaks that that make who she is. And so thank you for noticing those layers. Yeah. And also, yes, it is a, you know, a lesbian affair story, but it's not just for one specific audience. Like this is for a broader audience. It's not just, you know, a very narrow focus. So I commend you for that as well. Thank you. you yeah, know, I appreciate I, that. Because a lot of people like when they make a, you know, a community centric film, it's mm -hmm. very hyper focused on the community that people outside that just go, all right, whatever. So like, right. You know, for me, if your story wasn't this open, you know, since I'm not a part of that community, clearly, right. um, you know, it's Wait, like, what's that? <laughs> no, like you're not, I, I know who would have guessed a six foot three, uh, three person that looked like me as an a lesbian. You would have, you know, never guessed, but <laughs> This day and age, you don't, that. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so because you made it for a wider audience, I think that's going to be a, a, a more appealing storytelling for people. But thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And that was another goal was like, this is just, these are two people that fall in love. It could have been any gender, really. They're just going through that, that, you know, their relationship in that way. So you know, when the when the film comes out on VOD in November 7th, what is one thing that you would like the audience to get from it? And this is for each of you. Ooh. Hmm. Let's go first. <laughs> no, we're like, uh -oh. I don't want to go first. <laughs> it, all right. It's like second grade, Willow. You get to go uh -huh. first because you threw everybody else under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I was really giving them the mic. If they <laughs> I guess that like, it's it's the most like cliche answer, but it's so applicable and true. Just don't judge a book by its cover. Everyone is human, no matter what profession you are, no matter how you come off, no matter what your background is. I mean, you learn throughout this film that like through the first five minutes, you make all these assumptions. I mean, rightly so. It's like like spoon fed to you, like why, like what they do, how they act to eat, like one another, everything. But you slowly learn throughout the film that it's so much more than that, and we all are just human. We all have like our reasons for acting a certain way or different motives. And I just hope that that could bring that to the limelight, I suppose. Yeah, I'll piggyback off of what Willow just said. Um, another way of rephrasing what she said basically is give it a chance. I think the biggest mistake you can make is is not watching it because of your own analysis of whether it's the movie poster or the interview or whatever idea you think you have about this film I wow. promise you if you give it a chance you will be surprised because of the layers because of the storytelling because of the acting because of how it's very much so similar to real life that people present themselves in a different way and they go on a journey so give it a chance 
watch it and go on a journey with us because it will it will open your perspective. I can guarantee you that. So give it a shot. Take us home, Robin. I honestly don't think I could say it better than they both did, honestly. I mean, I just, I, I hope that, that um, maybe people can see a little bit of themselves and realize that they're not alone and that everybody goes through dark moments in their lives. And hopefully you, you can work your way out of it. Again, I don't want to give anything away, but you know, that we all have problems. And, and we all have different ways of dealing with them. Well, Girls That's... on Film comes out on VOD November 7th from Breaking Glass Pictures. Thank you so much for everybody for your time today. Let us know where we can find each of you on social media when, when we want to keep the conversation going. At Willow Gray, G-R-E-Y. <laughs> At Dare Taylor Official, D-A-R-E-T-A-Y-L-O-R-O-F-F-I-C-I-A-L on Instagram. Uh, at Robin Bain underscore official on Instagram. <laughs> Perfect, ladies. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Congratulations on this film. Thank you for having us. Thanks, everybody.